Greetings to you and happy Thanksgiving, uh, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this. I am going to have a, a little different service than we might normally have, partly because we usually gather at church and sing hymns and or have readings. I'm going to instead uh, talk a little bit first about giving thanks, then I'm going to read the readings for the day and finally conclude us in prayer. First, I want to talk about hope. Now, if you think about it, hope is the confidence that we have that the future is ultimately headed in the direction of good, of peace, of beauty. In, a sen in essence, the direction of God. And hope is the confidence that that future is heading in that direction, even when the presence itself, the present itself, is not that great is full of strife and looks downright ugly. In fact, times when God seems very absent. And yet we know deep down that God never is fully absent. And the reason I want to begin by looking at hope and talking about hope is because I believe that Thanksgiving in many ways is the other side of the coin. In the same way that hope is uh, sort of like glasses or lenses we put on to be able to see something in the future that we don't see in the present. Thanksgiving, in many ways, is looking back and seeing things from the past leading up to the present that we may not typically see or recognize. I uh, just, the other day, uh, something happened that happens over and over lately to me. I was in a store and in there for quite a while and had my mask on. And then walking out to the car with the cart, I had my mask on for a while and then finally I remembered I can take it off. And I took it off and took a nice, deep, fresh breath. And I was so thankful for that fresh breath. And yet so often I breathe, obviously, every day without a mask and rarely think to be thankful for that. There are so many things um, that we do and that are part of our lives that we forget to notice and be thankful for. If you think about this holiday, especially as we celebrate it here in America, um, we remember a time when pilgrims coming from Europe came to this new continent and the local natives at the new continent helped them to be able to find ways to, to live and to survive in a new land. And when we celebrate this, you think about the, um, the, the foods that we celebrate with. We have turkey, we have potatoes, um, we have cranberries, and we have squash or pumpkins. And maybe if we're lucky, some chocolate. And all of those things that I just named are actually all things native to this part of the world, to the new world. They are all things that uh, those coming from Europe had never ever experienced or seen before. And so the giving of thanks of, with these items is not only giving thanks that this new land has, has things that will provide, but it's also giving thanks for the many generations and thousands of years in the past of people, natives in this continent who have cultivated those things to be what they are today. Apparently, uh, scientists say that the original uh, crop or grass that became corn, uh, the cob on it was really small, size of your finger if that. But over patient and persistent generations of careful farming, uh, the natives uh, cultivated that into what we know today as corn, in which covers fields all around us, uh, which sustains so many in agriculture in our place today. Turkeys were native to this continent as well. In fact, apparently, although it's probably a good thing, Benjamin Franklin uh, wanted to make the turkey the national bird. Probably a little less majestic than the bald eagle. But because it was this new thing, it was a, a new kind of uh, fowl, poultry, and uh, those of you who are part of that business know that the turkey is amazing in how much it can create uh, for food with 
so much less feeding. Potatoes, um, such a central part of so many of our lives, were cultivated by the Incas down up in the mountains in South America. An, an amazing uh, product growing in the ground. They had varieties and varieties that is packed with uh, nutrition and energy and can be stored. And squash and pumpkins, again, can be stored food that you can grow fresh and save for later. They can be carved out for containers. Uh, there's so many amazing things about um, these foods that we often take for granted. Um, some of us love cranberries, some don't, but they do provide a little different uh, flavor or zing uh, to our Thanksgiving meal. And if you're lucky to have chocolate, and if you are someone who loves chocolate, I think you can give thanks for that, that that was developed in Central America by the natives thousands of years before us. And so I want you to remember to give thanks not only for those things that you will see around you this holiday, uh, the people and the foods and the goods and the luxuries we're surrounded with, but also to remember the things that are not with us, that we are thankful are not with us. There were many uh, diseases in the past that have been eradicated. Uh, diseases that ravaged people in thousands and millions and whole sections of the country and the world that now have been taken under control. When I was in high school, one time I had a toothache, a really, really bad toothache. Uh, so bad, I, I, had, I was lying on the floor and could hardly stand. And once that toothache was gone, I went to the dentist. It's amazing how wonderful it is not to have a toothache, to be thankful. I'm thankful now. I don't have perfect teeth, but right now I do not have a toothache. And I am so thankful for that. A couple of years ago when uh, we were in going down to Houston for the youth gathering, uh, we had a little side trip before the gathering began where we went to the beach there in Texas. And there um, on the beach, swimming in the waves, I was, uh, you know, I was trying to sort of body surf some of the waves in and uh, my glasses got taken off by the wave. And I saw them go over the wave and reached out and I couldn't get them and they were gone. And I looked and looked and they were just somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico right now. Fortunately, I had contacts, but they were back at the hotel. So I had to finish up uh, there at the beach. I had to get on the bus. I had to ride a long bus ride, get to the hotel, get up to my room, all without contacts or glasses. And I realized how much I cannot function without corrected vision. Um, really, I can't read anything unless it's up pretty close, but also not recognizing people. But even more than that, if you recognize them, not understanding their expressions, um, I realized it was really hard to even interact with people when I couldn't see well and I didn't really know what was going on. Um, it was very helpless. And, you know, not that long ago, before there were glasses and contacts, I would have been pretty helpless by now in my life. In fact, probably by my early 20s, I would have been that way. And think of how many of us are alive, how many of you watching this are alive today because of modern medicine. And without it, all kinds of things would have happened. Um, I bet at least three quarters of you watching this wouldn't be alive today without modern medicine. I don't think I would be alive today without modern medicine. Um, it's truly incredible the many things that have come to us from the past that we have in the present, yet we often forget to see them. Um, psychologists and scientists today are starting to recognize something that people of faith have known for so long, that remembering to give thanks, to find things to give thanks for, is one of the key foundations to a fulfilling life. And it's a key to being able to have hope for the future. It's a key to being able to appreciate the present. And it's a key to being able to love one another because of what we have to be thankful for. Let us this year, especially 2020, but every day, give thanks for what we have 
and what fortunately we do not have right now. Amen. I want to do the reading, and actually I'm going to read from a Bible for which I am thankful, and yet it's a reminder that we can be thankful for things that to others might look not so great. Uh, this Bible has no cover left, and in fact, part of Genesis is missing. Uh, this was my confirmation Bible. Uh, it's the Bible that I started reading when I was in high school that really led me to uh, my love of Scripture and uh, continues to uh, just bring back memories whenever I open this particular Bible up. So today I want to read, from our, read our four readings uh, from this Bible. It's the New Revised Standard Version, the same one that we would have at our pews at church. And our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, 7 to 18. And this is uh, Moses speaking to the people. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting that the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions, that he made water flow from you, from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Here ends the reading. The psalm for this Thanksgiving is Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you established the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your great signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have provided it. Your water, you water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your beauty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Amen. And now reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Though the testing of this minist- through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And now our gospel reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Now please join with me in prayer. Gracious and giving God, we give you thanks for the many blessings which you have given to us in this place and this time. Help us to have the eyes of thanksgiving, to see the many things in our past and present, which you have protected us from and which you have blessed us with. Be with those traveling and celebrating this day. Be with those who must work, with those who are sick, with those who are in need, with those who sorrow, and give to them your comforting and healing presence. We pray this in confidence in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I give thanks for this technology that we are able to reach around the world, that we are able to be with one another even when we have to be apart. God's blessings. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.